We believe that data collection analysis of bullying is absolutely imperative within schools. What it does is allows you to see patterns, notice issues that might be ranging in particular year groups, maybe between particular genders. If you don't collect that data, you can't recognise the patterns. If you can't recognise the patterns, then you are unable to act on that and ultimately prevent some of these behaviours from happening. From the students, we want to understand about their feelings about coming to school. Do they feel safe? Do they feel listened to? Do they know who they can go to if they feel anxious about anything? In 2015, we launched the Student Voice platform. It looks at then how we can get students to report bullying to us. There's sheets placed in the library in a very discreet area that they fill out, place it in a post box, and then I can access that and look at what is said. We have developed an emotional well-being response for these youngsters where they can simply send an email to bullying at. They may write nothing in the email at all but we know that that's somebody calling out for some support. We decided to have behaviour files in each classroom. These behaviour files really became like a log of behaviours for the teachers to complete. And what I've done is, as I collate the evidence on a spreadsheet, we've started to contextualise the data a little bit more. So in there I'll include uh, the gender of the children involved, ethnicity and whether they're free school meals children because that helps to create a bigger picture for us. One of the key things that we did was we got stakeholder feedback. That's absolutely imperative. We spoke to every member of staff, every pupil, every parent, every governor because as staff it's easy to have a view of your school. What you need to do is get that wider view so you get a much more accurate picture. We have done a student survey via SurveyMonkey and we asked them specific questions then on have they encountered bullying, have they witnessed it, what did they do when they saw it. We look at protected characteristics of students that might present as LGBT, have they had issues and when we have that data back we can look at them what it is that we need to address. We decided to go down the route of the Rights Respecting Schools Award which is run by UNICEF and it's an award that's based on the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of a Child and a lot of those underpin everything that we do. So for instance, inclusiveness and respect are part of that and we teach lessons around those values and the children understand that they have a key responsibility to that. Just recently we had a collapsed timetable day on equality and diversity. Given the children case studies and sort of looking at them and analysing what aspects of what had happened to them were being breached under the Equality Act. And it was about sexual orientation, gender and then they understood what they are protected from and what people potentially could be sort of up against if their rights were breached in any way. Data collection definitely has worked because what it's helped teachers to do is they know that they've got senior leaders who have their back in essence on a weekly basis because it's a simple system for them to fill in and it helps the senior leaders because they know exactly what's going on in every class and it helps the children because they know that if there is a problem it gets addressed and it gets addressed in a timely fashion. It's not one individual thing that's made a difference, but the whole culture of the school is about tolerance and acceptance and what we teach is the same and it has made an impact. And we've recently gone through an Ofsted and the children were telling the Ofsted inspector, this feels like another home. I'd say develop a process that's systematic, that's effective and user-friendly for staff because there's always a demand on teachers' time. I would say if it was a pearl of wisdom is make sure that you upskill your staff because I think that's the one thing that if children can't see that their concerns that they raise with you are not being dealt with, they're not going to have faith in you or any system. My biggest piece of advice is that you need to be persistent and consistent when dealing with anti-bullying because once you open up this can, it can seem absolutely terrifying, but actually what it gives you is an incredibly powerful view of your school and a really clear overview of what the areas of your school are that need to be developed, that need to be changed, and how you can go about that as a leader.